lines where it used to be just a silent option. So patients with severe mitral valve uh, regurgitation, if they are symptomatic or if they are is asymptomatic with LV dysfunction, new onset atrial fibrillation, pulmonary hypertension, mitral valve repair is recommended over mitral valve replacement. What, what do we surgeons need? So we talk about diagnostics just in passing. We don't need for you to tell us the patient has MR. You have to tell us where in the valve is the disease that causes the MR. Is it in the anterior mitral valve or in the posterior mitral valve? Is it in the P1, P2, P3, A1, A2, A3? You have to be more specific, especially for those of you who are planning to go into uh, uh, non-invasive cardiology. You have to be more specific when you describe your valves in patients with uh, mitral regurgitation. We need the size of the annulus so that we will know if we're going to put a, if a ring is just the only thing that is needed by the patient. We need to know the size and the direction of the regurgitant jets, of course, because it tells us which of the valve is, uh, it validates, uh, after you say that it looks like A1, A2 are involved, we will look at the, the direction of the jet and we will be able to validate whether it really, these are really the scallops of the anterior valve that are involved. Uh, Intraop TEE is important. One of the other reasons why we have been stunted in our progress towards mitral valve repair, aside from the fact that we don't have too many degenerative hearts, so your mitral valve prolapse is talagang severe, is because we don't have TEE, at least the TEE probe. We have several machines in the heart center, but the TEE probe broke down early during the acquisition of the new machine. That was about three or four years ago. And we cannot just bring up the, the, the big machines, the Sequoia machines upstairs. So what we have been using is the either the pediatric probe for the TEE, but that's not a very ideal probe because it floats inside the, the, the esophagus, or we do an intra-op surface echo. We wrap, we wrap the, the transducer and put it on top of the heart. Lalagyan namin ng sterile plastic, lalagyan namin ng gel, and then we, we, we press on the heart. Unfortunately, if we do it, we sometimes need to press on the heart really, and then it becomes difficult for us to assess if the repair is adequate. Maaring adequate when we do an insufflation test intraop, but when you press on the, the, the surface probe intraop, uh, we see different things, and, and it makes us... It, it, it makes it difficult for us to, to decide whether are we going back or are we just going to leave this as is and wait until the true surface echo tells us there is a severe MR or a moderate MR and then we go back and replace the valve or do a re-repair. So the, the diagnostic uh, intraop TEE is a very important tool, especially in a center which is inclined or really committed to do mitral valve repair. Just in passing, when there is a redundant posterior mitral valve leaflet, we can resect it and we call it a quadrangular resection. We call it a triangular resection when we resect a portion of the anterior mitral valve. The reason why we do a leaflet, a quadrangular leaflet resection is because we need to decrease the size of the posterior annulus. It is only the posterior annulus that dilates. The anterior annulus does not dilate, which is why if you're familiar with the rings, you will see some of the rings are open-ended. The Cosgrove ring is a C-ring or a, or a U-ring. The anterior mitral valve annulus does not have a support. Uh, the, new ring, the newer rings also put this in account, the physiologic rings. This anterior mitral valve is something that does not dilate, and so the only part that is really needed to be supported is the posterior annulus. Cordal shortening or transposition in patients with ruptured cordae or with prolapse uh, leaflet, not necessarily ruptured, but it's, uh, it's elongated, we can take it off and we can transpose. We can transpose a cordae from the posterior leaflet to the anterior leaflet and vice versa. But more usually, we transpose to the anterior leaflet. This is the simple ring, ring annuloplasty in patients with uh, 
ischemic cardiomyopathy with a dilated uh, heart, sometimes in patients with, uh, uh, mainly in patients with ischemic cardiomyopathy, sometimes it is just the ring. Put in the ring and the annulus will will become smaller and the, the valves will co once again. And this is the end-to-end -end repair. For those of you who are following up uh, progress in uh, valve uh, intervention, not necessarily valve surgery, the Alfieri technique or an end-to-end, -end, they just put uh, something to put together the midpoints of the anterior and the posterior and the posterior mitral leaflets. It will become a by, by something. You will just have two holes here. It's closed in the, in the middle. And later on, I'll show you how they are doing it in percutaneous intervention. This is actually a percutaneous intervention. The technique, the Alfieri technique or edge-to-edge -edge technique, especially for cardiomyopathy, is something that has been uh, employed just very recently, or at least a resurgence recently. It was being done in the early 70s, but it has uh, had a resurgence over the past two or three years. You can see there is a metallic sheen here because this is a percutaneous intervention. They just put clips on it. The latest uh, study in, uh, presented in Barcelona in 2006, they were able to show 12 uh, patients who underwent this kind of uh, percutaneous technique with an Edwards, uh, Edwards clip, and uh, 11 out of the 12 were successful. In other words, one of these days when we talk about mitral valve surgery or repair, it's going to be an interventionally standing in front of you instead of a... Uh, of a surgeon. The frequency of repair is steadily increasing, not in the Philippines, but hopefully sooner than later. The guidelines say that we should do it. If we say that we are really world class, then we should be able to do it, our, do it as well. The operative mortality is very low. The success, the success rate is very high. The reoperation rate is the same as in mitral valve replacement. It is supposed to be but it is not very clear to us. For others, it is for for others, it is clearly it is clearly shown that the mitral valve repair is uh, superior to mitral valve replacement. There is lower operative risk. There is better preservation of the ventricular function. There is lower risk of thrombosis. Of course, you have less need for anticoagulation or no anticoagulation at all. Improve hemodynamics, lower risk to endocarditis, better long-term survival, lower costs. Uh, not exactly really lower cost. A ring, a proper ring, will cost something like 65,000 pesos. A proper valve can go as low as 70,000 pesos now. So the true rings are also expensive. In the heart center, we have developed our own rings. Although we haven't implanted it uh, in, in, in a big number of uh, patients, we've done something like maybe two dozen uh, implantations of both mitral and tricuspid with the PHC ring. It is technically more demanding, mitral valve repair, and may require longer bypass time and occasionally may fail. But if you need to do mitral valve replacement, it is important, especially for patients with MR, degenerative MR, not necessarily rheumatic heart disease, which we see more often. Mitral valve replacement must preserve the cordae, at the very least, the posterior cordae. Can you imagine the reason why? The LV, dis the LV dysfunction that is usually associated with mitral regurgitation can somehow be, obvi be obviated by preserving the cordae which tether the posterior mitral valve to the, to the LV wall. So it will not dilate. If you cut off all the, post the posterior cordae, the heart will now become more globular and will, be more, uh, will require more support afterwards. So when mitral valve replacement is actually done in a patient where repair would have been an option, it is important to preserve the cordae. In chronic MR, MV replacement, the standard MV replacement that uh, many of our co-surgeons do, cut off all the cordae, both anterior and posterior, must never be done in patients with chronic MR.